Hello everyone. One such type of questions that needs an immense amount of practice is calendar test related problems. Although the frequency of this type of question is less in exams, they are of equal importance. If you have learned the basics of these questions, that it will become very easy for you to solve it. You can be asked whether the year mentioned in the question is a leap year or not. You will be given a date and a day and you will be asked to determine the day that will fall on the same date or next year and many more. We will try to cover some of the questions of calendar test and will explain you in detail the tricks and methods to solve these type of questions. To understand the calendar, you need to be aware of the odd day concept. But before that, let's see the table of contents. So we are going to study the odd days and the clock type of questions. Starting with the odd days. Now suppose we have to calculate the number of odd days in the, let's say 1200 years. Now in 1200 years, there are three years which are divided by 100 and 400. That is 400, 800 and 1200, correct? So this is 1200. And the remaining years are only divided by what? 100. That is, I would say 100, 200, 300, 500, 600, 700, 900, 1000 and 1100. Now, every 100 years have 76 ordinary years and 24 leap years. So, we have what? We have 76 ordinary years and 24 leap years. Now, odd days in the ordinary calendar is going to be 52 weeks plus 1 days. Okay. So it's going to be what? It's going to be 50, I'm going to write it here, 52 weeks plus one day. Okay. Now odd days in a leap year is going to be what? 52 weeks plus two days. So this is going to be a normal one and this is going to be a leap year one when we have what? Two days. So odd days in 100 years is going to be what? It's going to be 76 into 1 plus 24. 4 into 2. This is going to be what? Odd days in 100 years, which is nothing but 124 odd days. Now, this can also be written as 17 weeks plus 5 days. So, every 100 years will have what? 5 odd days. Alright. Every 100 years is going to have what? 5 odd days. Similarly, 200 years will have what? 5 into 2, that is 15 odd days and 300 years will have what one day that is now the thing is that 100 years will have five odd days similarly 200 years will have what five into two that is we are going to basically have three odd days okay and in 300 years we are going to have what one odd day so that is in 100 years we have five odd days in 200 years we have three odd days and in 300 years we have one odd day now in a century, that is 100 years, there will be 24 leap years and 76 non-leap years. This means that there is going to be what? 24 times 2 plus 76 times 1. That is nothing but 124 odd days. Since 7 odd days make up a week, to find out the net odd days, we need to divide 124 by 7. The remainder is going to be 5 and this is the number of odd days in a century. The number of odd days in 400 years will be what? The number of odd days in 400 years is going to be 5 into 4 plus 1 because 400 is itself a leap year and that is why it has one odd day extra. Thus odd days in 400 is going to be what? 0. And this is same for every year which is a multiple of 100 and 400. Thus 1200 which we saw earlier which is a multiple of both that is 400 and 100 will also have odd days. Now we will solve some examples to have a better understanding of the concept of odd days. So let's start with this question first. So uh, before that let's just you know see what are the things which we need to remember. So first of all things to remember. Now you may memorize the following points related to the concepts of calendars to save time during the paper. Alright that is 100 years gives us what 5 odd days as calculated then 200 years gives us 5 into 2 that is 10 7 that is 1 week that is 3 odd days okay 300 give us how many 1 odd day 
whereas 400 years gives us what zero odd days so let's move on to the question now so the question says that january 2 2007 was what tuesday what will be the day on january 2 2008 now here you can see that 2007 is neither a multiple of four okay thus 2007 is an ordinary year so the odd day in 2007 is going to be what one now since the second day of january 2007 was what tuesday as it is already mentioned the second day of January 2008 will be one day beyond Tuesday. Alright, and that is why January 2, 2008 is going to be Wednesday. Thus, the correct answer is option number C, that is Wednesday. Let's move on to next question. Now, next question states what? Next question states that for what year will the calendar be the same as for the year 2009? Now, for the year to have the same calendar as 2009, you need the sum of the numbers of the odd days. When the sum is divisible by 7, then that year will have the same calendar as what year 2009. Now 2010 is going to have what? 2010 is going to have one odd day, correct? Whereas 2011 is going to have again one odd day. Then 2012 is going to have what? Two odd days. Similarly, 2013, so here 2 will come. Similarly, 2013 is going to have what? One odd day. And 2014 is going to also have one. Whereas 2015 is also going to have one. Now here the sum of odd days in these year is what? 7. So it's 4, 5, 6 and 7. Thus 2016 will help the hell have the same calendar as your year 2009. That is 2016 is going to be the answer. How did I calculate? We just added all these, okay? All the number of odd days. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So 7 is the answer and that will come in what? Year 2016. So the correct answer is what? Year 2016 which is going to have the same calendar as year 2009. Let's move on to the next question. Now next question says that Mr. Khan has celebrated his birthday on Tuesday the 30th of September 1997. So when will he celebrate his birthday on the same day again? Now the name day will be repeated after every what 7 days. And 1997 is what an ordinary. So it will have only one odd day and thus 1998 will also gain what one day. Now 1998 is going to gain one day. 1992 is going to gain how many one day. Whereas 2000 will gain two days. And similarly, when I'm going to move forward, then 2001 is going to gain one day, 2002 is going to gain one day, and 2003 is going to gain one day. So what are these here? This is 1998, this is 1999, this is 2000, this is 2001, 2002, and this is 2003. So thus, on 30th September 2003, Mr. Khan will celebrate his birthday again on what? Tuesday. So it's going to be 30th September 2003. That is option number D. So let's move on to the next question. Now the next question states what? The next question states that what was the day on 10th August 1947? So I need to calculate the day on what? 10th August 1947. Now in this type of question, we need to start by subtracting one year from the year given in the question. That is 1974 minus 1 is going to be what? 1946. Now remember the number of odd days in 100, 200, 300 and multiples of 400 years in 1946. Because it's going to be what? It's going to be 1600 plus 300 plus 46. That is 1946. So 1600 will have what? Zero odd days. 300 will have what? One odd day. And 46 will have what? 46 odd days. So the number of odd days is going to be what? 0 plus 1 plus 46 for the number in the bracket that is this divided by 4 and the quotient is to be added in the odd days. Here the quotient is 11 so the odd days is going to be what? The odd days is going to be 0 plus 1 plus 46 plus 11 and all this is going to be what? All this is going to be what? 58. Now when you divide 58 by 7, you will have 2 as a remainder. Thus December 31st, 1946 was what? Tuesday. 
and from here count the number of days until 10th August 1947. So 10th August 1947 we need to count the numbers okay. So the total number of days is going to be what 222 from that day okay. So these are going to be the total number of days that is 222 and we need to add 2 from the previous year and then 224 is going to be what the number which we get when we add 2 from the previous year and we need to divide it by what 7. So you have 0 as a remainder and thus 10th August 1947 was what Sunday. So your correct option is going to be what option number B that is Sunday. Now let's move on to the next type of problems that is clock questions. Now we all know that clock is an instrument used for maintaining and indicating the current time. It usually consists of an hour, minute and a second hand. And that is why the question asked on clocks are based on these hands and their places only. Now the questions that are covered in the clock are based on the angle between the hands and the opposition like the position of these hands. So sometimes the questions are based on the faulty clocks or the time lost and gained by these clocks. So we will introduce you to the concepts which we will help you to solve these types of questions in the exams quickly and effectively. Now the basics you need to remember in a clock test is that every hour has what 60 minutes. So every hour has 60 minutes then every minute has 60 seconds and thus a minute is what? 1 60th of an hour or a second is what 1 60th of what a minute correct correct so when the hand are what 15 minutes apart then they are perpendicular to each other correct so when they are 15 minutes apart suppose this is what your clock so this hand is here and this hand is here so whenever they are 15 minutes apart they are what perpendicular to each other now in a clock test, a clock is always circular in shape and it's divided into what 60 equal parts that is nothing but minute spaces. Now when a minute travels 60 times, it takes an hour and it covers how many degrees? 360 degrees of the space and thus a minute cover what? 6 degree of the space. So when this divided by 60, we will get what? 6 degrees. Correct? So when the hand is like in the clock are 30 minutes apart from each other, then they are opposite to each other and are in what? A straight line. And after one hour, our hand travels a space of what? 5 minutes or what? 30 degrees. Now in the clock, if like suppose the clock hands are what? 11 times opposite to each other in 12 hours and 22 times opposite in a day. Now the hands in the clock are perpendicular 22 times in 12 and 44 times in one day. And in an hour the minute hand gains 55 minutes over an hour hand. Thus to calculate the number of minutes gained by the minute over an hour we have to multiply it by what? 16 by 55 or if I actually solve this it will be what? 12 upon 11. Now some of the important concepts that you need to remember before solving the problems on angles are like in one minute our hand travels what 0.5 degrees so it's nothing but it is 0 0.5 degrees and minute hand travel what 6 degrees per minute. The angle of the hour hands calculated from the vertical in 30N at any given N O clock. So let's move further and try solving this question. So when do the hands of the clock are opposite to each other like between 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock. Now when the clock is at 4 o'clock the minute hand is what at 12. To be at opposite hand minute hand crosses 4 at what 20 minutes and after that it travels for how many minutes 30 minutes. Thus it has gained how many minutes 20 plus 30 which is nothing but what. 50 minutes okay as mentioned above for one hour of the time minute hand gains how many 55 minute spaces over an hour hand therefore the total minute spaces that the minute gains for 50 minutes over the hour hand are what 50 times into 60 by 55 correct and this is equal to what 54 6 by what 11 
Thus, the correct answer here is what? Option number 2, that is 55, 6 over 11. Let's move on to another question. And the next question states that between 8.15 and 7.15, when will the hand of the clock coincide with each other? Now, the formula to solve these types of questions is 60 upon 11 times n. Here, n is what? n is 8.15. That is nothing but 8.15 times 16 that is nothing but 33 by 4 all right thus 60 by 11 into 33 by 4 is what 45 so the correct answer is going to be what 45 here let's move on to next question the next question states that in 18 minutes how much do the minutes gain over the hour hand now, in an hour, the minute hand gains what? 330 degrees space over the hour hand, which is equal to what? Your 60 minutes. Thus, in 18 minutes, it gains how many? 360 upon 60 into 18. That is nothing but 99 degrees. Thus, the correct answer is going to be what? Option number B, that is 99 degrees. The last question of the day states what? It states... That what is the angle between the minute hand and hour hand when the time is what? 3.25. Now in 12 hours, the hour hand forms an angle of what? 360 degrees. Thus in 3 hours and 25 minutes, it traces how many? 360 by 12 into 41 by what? 12. That is going to be nothing but if I solve it, it's going to be 102 and a half degrees okay so this is going to be this now the angle which is formed by 25 minutes is going to be what 360 upon 60 into 25 that is 150 degrees thus the total angle that is formed is 102 degrees by 2 that is this into 150 degrees that is this and the answer is going to be what 47 and a half degrees so the correct answer is going to be what the correct answer is going to be 47 1 by 2 degrees so i hope you people have understood a little bit about calendars and clocks you can go to edurev and attend these tests to understand this chapter in depth you can unlock all the logged videos documents and tests for cat with edurev infinity plan and ASOR exams at less than 80 rupees per month. Thank you.